Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program again and uh, I've got a couple of things to talk about but this is going to be the start of a new thing, not really a series but just a new thing um, and that is a uh, almost a replacement for doing series is. and basically I'm just going to do single KSP episodes which are completely unrelated to each other but do have an order so this is going to be KSP number one effectively and uh, each of them is going to have a topic and you know it, it means I have a bit less restrictions in what I can do in a video about KSP. So if something pops up like the Lunar Lion which popped up um, well not a few days ago, it's been around for a while but they started doing the fundraising thing tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, a few days ago and I'll speak about that in a minute then I can do a video about it and it's in KSP and it's you know sort of you'll hopefully learn something and it'll be interesting. Anyway the first thing I'd like to say is sorry for not making a video, it's been not quite a week but quite a while anyway uh, since I last made one, I didn't make one through the sort of week um, because I've had, well, I've been a bit tired because I've had loads of prelims which like mock exams, I don't know if they're only called prelims where I am but uh, yeah, prelims and uh, also I've done a little PC upgrade, small PC upgrade which is just a recording hard drive which means that I can record slightly easier and you know it's a bit less stress on the hard drive Anyway, uh, in this one, as I mentioned before, we're going to start off with the uh, Lunar Lion, which was, it, which is a essentially an entry to a competition by Google. Let me just um, start this up. We're going to sandbox mode, and there we go. Yeah, so essentially, the Lunar Lion project is an entry to a competition by Google. Um, well, it's sort of helped out by Google, and it's essentially to win, I think, one million or two million dollars. Um, but basically, it's f uh, for private space companies to enter and try and send something all the way to the moon. So I thought in the first episode, because this is kind of a rele relevant thing that's going on at the moment, I may as well actually um, try and recreate that. The other thing I'd like to recreate sometime soon is the uh, Chinese rover because I've not actually had a go at doing that in my spare time yet. I've not really had that much time to play KSP. The other thing that might happen, it depends how you guys really feel about it, is doing like the same thing as I'm doing now except just playing Counter-Strike and you know playing a match and doing a live commentary. Anyway, I'm gonna get... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and build one of these and uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like when we're done. So now we've actually built this thing um, I think we're ready, pretty much, to uh, go ahead and launch it. So, uh, while we are launching, I'd like to well, explain a little bit more about the Lunar Lion thing and the whole competition, because it's kind of interesting. Um, Google teamed up with another company whose name I cannot remember, and basically said, you know, for your competition we'll provide a prize fund, I think, and uh, now there's a million dollar prize fund. Uh, basically, the competition is as follows. Um, the teams that enter have to uh, take a um, some form of unmanned ship to the moon and it has to then, after landing, make a displacement or move 500 meters. So basically, there are a few ways they could have done this and you can obviously see we've um, not got a rover on here because the, uh, the lions didn't use a rover or the Lunar Lions or whatever, I can't remember, the Lunar Lion doesn't use a rover or isn't planned to use a rover and that's because there's a lot more things that can go wrong with a rover which makes sense, you know, there's wheels and you've got to ha find some kind of deployment system because the rover has to be dropped on the surface and yeah, it's a lot more complicated so they decided they're essentially going to do a little hop um, 500 meters and, you know, hopefully that will actually uh, get them 500 meters away from where they landed. Um, this does add a couple of complications but they're nowhere near as large um, as the complications that they'd have if they just decided to make a rover or something. So that's what that's why they went for that and actually you know that makes a lot of sense because trying to land a rover somewhere and then dropping it off as you and then you know moving it as you may know if you've uh, played Kerbal Space Program isn't really an easy thing to do. So I can see why they did that and it makes a lot of sense, even though sometimes, you know, when you do actually get a rover to work, it's, I guess, a little bit more satisfying, but that's not really what they're trying to do. Anyway, um, you can see here, this is actually a reasonably accurate representation of what happens, or it should be, when it actually makes it to space. Um, basically, once I get into uh, the apoapsis that I want, I'll tell you. 
Um, but basically, there's like a deorbit stage and a land stage, and then they've got a transfer stage and a launch stage, uh, which should be fairly similar to what the actual um, thing has or will have because obviously it's not been built yet it's still in prototy prototyping stages you know they're still testing out engines and things but they do have a plan of what they're going to do and it should be uh, reasonably similar to what they're planning on doing now they do actually i think have a confirmed launch date as well i think it's sometime in 2015 so look forward to that and uh, yeah that'll be kind of cool seeing seeing them launch uh, and actually one of the things that you can get from you know donating to them is actually access to the launch you get like a launch pass so obviously you still have to go all the way to where it's being launched which is somewhere in america i don't know where they're, where they're launching from actually but uh, yeah you can actually see the launch if you donate enough money which is kind of a cool thing now one thing i'd like to say by the way is sorry for the keyboard noise i'm thinking about getting another keyboard but i couldn't stand using that mac keyboard any longer so i stopped and uh, yeah that, that's why uh, it's just too difficult to type on and things. So that's why there is some keyboard noise. I'm using my older keyboard, which is still a decent keyboard, um, but just not mechanical or anything and not particularly quiet. So I'm going to look into getting a mechanical keyboard that is quiet, um, but I'm not really sure what to get there. And I don't really have very much money to spend, so that's not really the best thing to spend it on. Anyway, the other thing I'd like to talk about is um, obviously how they're actually going to get there. And as I was saying, I've essentially got like a transfer stage here, a transfer um, and probably a circularization at the moon stage. And then we've got a stage to sort of bring our periapsis right down and then the last stage is obviously going to land it. And the thing that's good about having such a small sort of landing stage and things is that, okay, the engines may not be that efficient, but you know, you don't really have to do orbit very much mass either. So it becomes quite a bit easier. Uh, not having to worry about deorbiting an entire lander, manned lander or something. It's just um, just a small thing. And I think they said that this uh, this thing will actually end up being about four feet in diameter, four to five feet in diameter, which you know is reasonably large. Um, not massive, but reasonably large. So it also means that there's not too much mass to take up there, I guess. Anyway, now. Um, let's just make the transfer burn to the moon. We're just going to use the rule of thumb there um, that we need to obviously point um, so that the moon is just coming over the horizon, which is what we're doing. And then we can make our transfer burn. The other thing I'd like to speak about a bit while we're not doing anything particularly interesting is uh, you know what you, what you actually think of the idea of doing these kind of videos where it's just one-off episodes instead of a series. And I'd kind of like to, at the end, um, do just do these videos and tutorials because I think that's the most interesting way to run my channel um, and the way which means I'm not s restricted to what I can do in a video because if I'm restricted to what I can do in a video, that's generally what makes it boring and I'm not doing something that I'm actually necessarily interested in at that time. So yeah, that's a thing. And uh, also, the you may have noticed over the weekend because I wasn't making videos, I was actually sewing up my channel a lot and I deleted a whole load of old tutorials because they weren't really useful anymore in the sense that, uh, you know, they'd add updated versions of them or they were done when I had a bad microphone and things like that. So I've deleted a lot of my old tutorials and uh, started again on in that sense. But uh, yeah, having done that, what I have also done, oh god, I've just burnt for Minmus, haven't I? Or oh, not even Minmus, Ike. <laughs> um, yeah. What I have done is um, written down a big list of all the tutorials that I need to do. Um, and I'll read that list out if I can pick it up without making too much noise. And yeah, so, um, I've, having done another asparagus staging and geostationary orbit um, tutorial, I've got to do a gravity assist tutorial, um, an interplanetary transfer tutorial, landing at KSC is another one I'd like to do, and also a tutorial on action groups, a docking tutorial, and a rendezvous tutorial, like two separate ones rather than um, rather than one tutorial. And then I've also got a rover design and a free return trajectory tutorial, obviously separate tutorials there. So those are two things, or a few things that I'm going to have to do, and I will be doing sometime in the near future when I have time, 
and uh, yeah, that, that will be a thing. And then I'll pretty much have finished my big list of tutorials, all the tutorials that I really wanted to do. So, as always, a lot of um, you know, requests and things are always useful. So if you have any, um, then please do tell me because they're really useful and I like it when people actually tell me what they want rather than me just making what I hope people want. Um, so yeah, that, that's a thing. Anyway, after I have done all those, I won't really have that much to do. And that's one of the things that's made me think about playing Counter-Strike a bit on this channel. So I'll have something to do between the Kerbal Space Program videos. Um, so obviously I'll be doing Kerbal Space Program uh, most of the time. And then it, maybe once a week or something doing a Counter-Strike video. So that, that will be interesting. And there we go, we've got a moon intercept. Actually, it's a moon collision course, but we'll fix that a bit later on. I'm not going to try and worry about that now when we're a whole orbit away. I'll just wait till we get inside the sphere of influence and then uh, fix that. So we need to burn, if you think about it, that way will be east. So we need to burn west pretty much. So let me just point us west and then uh, hopefully, yep that's the right way. There we go. I'm a genius. Anyway, there we go. So let's get the periapsis up to about 40 kilometers. And then uh, we can time warp in and circularize and then pick our landing spot. Uh, I'm not sure actually, I think they'll probably end up getting into a north-south orbit when they actually go, because they're obviously going to fly over the Apollo landing site, Apollo 11 landing site, which is a really cool thing to do. Um, but yeah, they're going to do that. And I presume that means, because they said they're going to land about 30 kilometers north of it, if they're going to fly over it, they're going to have to fly pretty much north-south. Uh, but I have no idea if that's actually true. Anyway, um, there we go. That's pretty much circular. I think we should try and land in this crater. So I'm going to time warp around a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to make this burn and then split off this stage because this stage won't really be very useful after that. We don't need it particularly. Uh, so we can burn retrograde now. And just try not to adjust the orbit too much by, you know, burning to spin us around. That would be a bit stupid really. And yeah, we'll just bring the periapsis round about uh, maybe five kilometers or so. Oh, okay. So that's a bit low. Um, so if I burn, let me think, if I burn straight up we'll probably end up with it a little bit higher anyway, which is sort of what we want. And now we're just reducing it by burning. Okay, so we actually want to land over here somewhere, so we're going to burn retrograde with the next stage when we when we get to like around here somewhere. Um, but this stage, yeah, that's about the right direction. So let's just time warp, and hopefully we'll be able to get around to here. Anyway, I hope you like this style of video. I don't really know if you will, but I thought it would be a bit of a sort of tutorial thing where I can talk about what I'm doing, but also talk about how that's relevant to real life. And there will be some that are more relevant to real life than others. Um, obviously, there will be some things where it's just nothing to do with real life at all. Anyway, we're above this crater, but we also want to go a bit north because we want to actually, you know, land as close to it as possible. And let's see what this stage can do. It won't be taking... No, it's not taking the fuel out of there. That's fine. So this is literally just going to be to deorbit and yeah there we go we're definitely come down gonna come down somewhere in here well, this is really nice actually to maneuver okay so that stage is done with so we can split it off and now we've got the other um, little engines and I'm hoping that we, yeah this will be strong enough I think um, I'm hoping that they would be and I think they are so now I'm just gonna deploy the landing gear there we go Wow, that actually looks really nice. <laughs> this is really cool. Uh, I don't really fly space probes very often because generally I don't think they're that fun in the sense that there's no kerbals at stake. But actually, you know what? This is really cool. Um, we need to burn quite a lot because these things don't have the highest thrust. And that's kind of realistic in a way, I guess. And we're still we're still uh, slowing ourselves down fairly quickly, really, in comparison to some things. I was kind of hoping that we'd be going pretty much horizontally at the moment, but 
that didn't really work out with the way we had a periapsis and things set up. And I didn't really want to use manoeuvre loads, I prefer not to most of the time. But you can see even though, you know, we are using this tiny little tank here, we actually do have quite a lot of fuel. Um, we'll be able to easily make that 500 meter suborbital hop that, uh, that we said we'd make. And it's at this point where we can have a look around, see if there's any moon arches anywhere that we could go and have a look at. I don't think there is. Um, well, I know there are a couple nearby, but I don't think there's any really nearby. Um, so we're not going to worry about that, actually. But there we go. We're pretty much down on the ground. And uh, yeah, if there's anything, you know, some, sometimes I'll have a video where I've maybe got the thing that's in the video to talk about, and then something else to talk about, which maybe you guys could suggest or point me in the right direction of, you know, if there's something interesting you've seen in the news, maybe, in the space news, um, go ahead and point me towards that. And I will probably quite happily make a video where I talk about that as well as doing something else. And there we are. We're on the surface. So now I'm just going to... Uh, well, time warp, go through a day first of all, so it's not just on the same day that we, you know, as soon as we've landed, we do that little suborbital hop and get our time warp. And there we go, let's do this. Yeah, we can actually pick up a pretty big amount of speed, and we've still got a lot of fuel left. This thing would actually be really good to do some science with, you know, if you want to build something like this um, and do some science for career mode, you could do that, that would work. Actually, I think this works really well. So, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We're nearly finished our mission, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.